Red Bull has seen a very dominant start to the 2023 season, but it seems like this will change sooner rather than later. The Austrian team is facing a lot of obstacles ahead of them, and with Aston Martin and Mercedes catching up very quickly, we might see an action-packed race in two weeks' time, as Red Bull was fiercely warned by its rivals about the upgrades they're bringing to Silverstone. On top of that, Perez's slump in performance means that Red Bull have only one driver they can rely on, which up until this point didn't seem to be an issue, but will likely turn into a liability once the UK GP comes knocking at the door. Could we see the start of Red Bull's demise after Aston Martin and Mercedes made fast recoveries from where they started? It is no secret that Red Bull's dominance in 2023 scared their rivals, with not much left to be done once the RB19 started to destroy everyone on the track. However, two of its most formidable rivals, Aston Martin and Mercedes, have been able to somehow keep up with the Austrian squad, given the fact that Perez's latest performance allowed them to gather more points, and this is going to be enhanced even more in the near future. Mercedes introduced a brand new philosophy to their car, one that saw Hamilton finish on the podium in two consecutive races with Barcelona being the race in which Mercedes were able to beat everyone not named Max Verstappen. While many labelled this as a one-race wonder, the Montreal GP saw Hamilton finish on the podium yet again, beating both Ferrari drivers and Perez. And had it not been for Russell's mistake, Mercedes would have had a very effective weekend, one that they had very small hopes for due to the nature of the track. But after collecting data from the last two races, Mercedes are now more than confident that they can catch up to Red Bull with the latest development package they're bringing to Silverstone, the closest race they call home track. As of now, the issue seems to be with the floor of the car, a part that, although it was rebranded with the entire philosophy of the car, still has a long way to go after we've seen how the RB19's floor looks in Monaco. James Allison confirmed that his team of engineers is working on the RB19's floor pictures from Monaco and trying to implement as much as they can on their own car. But even though they cannot replace the entire floor and mount it on the narrow chassis of the W14, they can still draw inspiration and make one of the fastest cars on the grid. What seems to be a huge revelation for Mercedes is that the W14 is now a car that performs very well on medium and high-speed corners. And this is something with which they've struggled for a year and a half. It is true that Hamilton's deficit to Verstappen in Barcelona was more than 24 seconds, but this was just the first genuine race with their newest upgrade package. And with a couple of setups, the Brit might be much closer to his first win after 2021 Saudi Arabia GP, and the entire F1 world could be in a total frenzy if there was someone else other than Red Bull to win the Silverstone Grand Prix. Yes, Mercedes will have a strong chance in Austria as well, but this is a race in which the team is not bringing any upgrades. And if we compare the high altitude of the track with the Sao Paulo GP, we might expect the W14 to be stronger than usual. To top that off, this was a track on which Verstappen struggled massively with tyre degradation last year, and with the new aerodynamic elements of the W14, they might be in for a huge race on the Red Bull ring. But the team's focus is on Silverstone, and when talking about the race, James Allison was full of hope that the dominance of the Austrian squad would end sooner rather than later. Earlier this month, the old new CTO of the Brackley Bay squad promised a whole bunch of W14 upgrades throughout the season, and we can't help but see his immediate impact on the car's performance. The next one is coming in Silverstone, as Allison said, and it would be followed by smaller upgrades in either Budapest or Spa. When talking about what the future holds for his team, he went on to add, the upgrades will keep coming. We hopefully have a decent package to build upon with what we put on the track in Monaco. Then we just step forward from here up to the summer break and beyond. Furthermore, he sent a fierce warning to Red Bull that their dominance could end as easily as it started, because now that the teams understand what needs to be done, the extra wind tunnel time provides them with a solid groundwork on their aerodynamics, which is the root of Red Bull's advantage compared to the rest of the grid. Furthermore, he went on to emphasize the work that his team is putting into making the W14 a much more competitive machine. And when talking about this matter, Allison went on to add, to be improving our car week on week and to hold clear in our heads the target that they, Red Bull, don't have a God-given right to be in the lead, they're there by merit, having worked really well. And if we can do as good or a better job, we'll be there. That is actually a lot of fun. It's a very, very exhilarating thought once you frame it correctly in your head, and something that we're all tucked into trying to make a reality. I cannot help but note that the shift in mentality in Mercedes once the upgrades brought the results they expected, and now that this is the reality for them, it's certainly the bright side of the sport for us as well. But apart from Mercedes, the newly emerged Aston Martin is also sending threats to Red Bull about their potential one-team and one-man season, with Alonso sending fierce warnings that he's up there for the second spot in the championship, 
and race wins are something that is knocking on the Silverstone Base squad's door right now. Lawrence Stroll has poured in a lot of money to make everything as it is right now, but it's evident that this is definitely not his final goal as he eyes the first race for the team since they were rebranded back in 2021. Alonso has been able to cut down the gap to Verstappen's race lead and keep it around 9 seconds, something that not even Hamilton was able to do in Barcelona. Of course, you need to consider the fact that Verstappen was cruising and Alonso was putting in qualifying laps to avoid the battle with Hamilton. But with the aero time that Aston Martin has, one couldn't help but wonder, where is the limit for the green Red Bull? Things are going to get a lot scarier for the Austrian squad now that the simulations in Silverstone show that Aston Martin can fight on the same level as Red Bull. More precisely, the data they're collecting matches the current pace of the Austrian team. If you think about it, they've hired all of the available engineers, led by Dan Fallows, who was the ex-chief of the aerodynamic department at Red Bull. And with a lot more freedom in Aston Martin, he's making a wonder out of the AMR23. Aston Martin brought their first upgrade to Canada, one that saw Alonso finish second and Stroll climb from P16 to P10, only to be promoted to P9 and add two valuable points to his team. While the Canadian's performance is under a lot of scrutiny, passing cars while stuck in a DRS train is a very difficult mission. And according to Mike Crack, the upgrades that the team brought in Canada worked, meaning that they can now fight with Red Bull on such circuits. When talking about the F1 caravan visiting high-speed circuits such as the Red Bull Ring and Silverstone, Mike Crack was more than excited to fight with the RB19. As he went on to add, I'm not concerned because I think we've seen the latest upgrades seem to work and there are some tracks coming up now where you have a lot of high-speed corners. I think we improved our car in high-speed corners, although there are not so many here, Montreal. It's a lot of braking. We're actually looking forward to them, high-speed circuits, because in such circuits, I think we also see the true strength of Red Bull and also we have a better indication of how far we are away. One thing that Aston Martin hopes for is the aero time something that they have a lot of time to use and will definitely do so prior to their home race in Silverstone, where they're also planning to bring an upgrade package to the AMR23. But as of now, it seems like all teams have adopted what Red Bull invented, except for Aston Martin's slightly different approach to the side pull design, one that's working extremely efficiently on the car's chassis. To top that off, you have Ferrari, a team that was able to beat Perez at bay, and a team that is struggling with consistency, not mechanical or organic issues on the car. I know this might sound silly if you say it at this point of the season, but Ferrari might be the closest team to Red Bull in terms of pure pace and strength of the car. Given the fact that they were the only team that did not have to do an extreme overhaul on their car's design and aerodynamic concept due to the 2022 regulations. But with Ferrari being Ferrari and the Maranello team not being able to work out their issues in a responsible manner, the burden is now on Mercedes and Aston Martin to bring hell on Red Bull's heads. Something that I see happening in Silverstone. Red Bull is a team that doesn't have as much aero time as these two rivals, meaning that for every upgrade they bring, they might have to test it directly on the track and see how it performs, an action that could have huge consequences for the performance of the RB19.